Watch over us and bless us in Jesus Christ's name. Truly, you know, I want to just, you know, thank and praise God truly for allowing me to be able to wake up this morning. You know, I didn't wake up on my own, but I woke up because the Lord woke me up in Jesus Christ's name. You know, and I give him praise. I give him thanks. Not only for that, I give him thanks for how he blessed me on yesterday in Jesus Christ's name. And the day before, and how he's going to bless me tomorrow if he allows me to live in Jesus Christ's name. To live with him, you know, as the Bible says, in him we live, we move, we have our being. It's not on my own accord. You know, I had to learn that. 
You know, there was a time in our life to where, you know, we thought that, hey, it was all about us. But, you know, when we come to knowledge, it's not about us. It's God that gives us the strength. It's God that gives us the breath. It's God that gives us the life and all of our movement in Jesus Christ. And truly, I want to honor him. I want to praise him. I want to thank him for what he's doing for me in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, I thank and praise God truly for the scripture this morning in Jesus Christ, man. You know, our brother was reading uh, the first chapter of Mark in Jesus Christ, man. It's just a, it's just one little one scripture in there that I want to, you know, pull out in Jesus Christ, man. The first chapter of Mark. It was something, something he said that, you know, it says, in, it says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. You know, one thing I have seen and acknowledged about God, God has never, he's always sent someone to forewarn us. And I thank God for that. Amen. You know, it's good to have someone to, to tell us about God before God come or before God bring harm or danger upon us in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You know, because, you know, God could be a God to where he can just wipe us off. Amen. He'll still be just, but he give us chance. Amen. he give us opportunity. You know, God, God won't just wipe us out as he can. He's still God if he do. But we thank God because he, 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 he allows us. Someone to come and tell us something before, you know, he brings destruction upon us. He forewarns us in Jesus Christ's name. I want to call your attention to the 29th chapter of Deuteronomy. A servant of God, Moses. Moses was one the way he was out when God called him in Jesus Christ's name. He was out and he saw something that, that got his attention. He saw a burning bush. You know, sometimes in life, God can show us things and God can gather our attention. But are we listening? Mo Thank God that Moses was listening. Not only before that, but Moses was one to where, you know, sometimes in life to where we as people of God, we can't go out and do all kind of wicked things and expect God to just come and, you know, pour out his blessings upon us in Jesus Christ's name. Sometimes God want to use a vessel, but he don't want no old filthy vessel in Jesus Christ's name. Sometimes we have to set ourselves apart. Yes. You know, sometimes our children, we can raise up our children to be good and obedient children, and God can use them. You know, God don't want no, nobody to where they are all kind of wickedness and so forth in their life and to where they can't stand before the people for nothing in Jesus Christ's name. But I thank God for Moses, you know, a servant of God, you know, how Moses, how he was leading the people of God. You know, I'm quite sure, you know, everybody is not a leader in Jesus Christ's name. Amen? Amen. I say everybody is not a leader. Amen. Some are better at following. But God has chosen leaders in this life. Amen. You know, and it's good to be a leader, but it's also good to be a follower. Before you can be a, a leader, you must be able to be a good follower. Amen. You know, that's in everything in life in Jesus Christ's name. But Deuteronomy... I want to start off at verse 1. Deuteronomy, I'm going to read this entire chapter in Jesus Christ's name. Deuteronomy, 29th chapter, start at verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he, which he made with them in Hewar. In other words, this is a different covenant. He had already made one in, in Hewar, but now he's making a different covenant. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, unto Pharaoh, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land. Sometimes God can show us things in life to where sometimes he'll bring us to, I heard someone was saying today how that, how God, you know, before has blessed them in Jesus Christ's name. In other words, sometimes God takes us through things to bless us on the other hand in Jesus Christ's name. Sometimes we don't know why we're going through this or why we even went through that in Jesus Christ's name. But I found in the scripture how the Bible talks about God knows our ending at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows our beginning at the He knows our ending at the beginning. In other words, God knows things about it before we even go through it, saints. Mm -hmm. 
He know what we're going to do before we even do it. But that's God. That's not us. He won't put that upon us because our heart and our minds cannot bear those things. But God knows. Verse 3. The great... Let's we'll start back at verse 2. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt, unto Pharaoh, and unto all his servants, and unto all his land. In other words, you were witnesses of these things. You saw the majesty power of what God did to your enemies in Jesus Christ's name. One thing about, you know, God, he brought the children out of the land of Egypt. But they were under hard taskmasters. They were, they were basically slaves and so forth. But God had brought them out of the land of Egypt. But God was bringing them out. In other words, but they went into Egypt because simply they were, you know, that disobeyed God. And saying sometimes through life we'll disobey God. But when we disobey God, set ourselves up for a fall. Because God will punish us. You know, God don't want, he don't want to punish us, but punishment is set because of disobedience, because we disobey God. Verse 3. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles, yet the Lord hath not given you in heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. Sometime in life, saints, God can get ready to do a thing, or God may be doing something to us, but we're asking the question, why? Why? Why Why am I going through all of this? In other words, God has given you the understanding of, of why he's putting this punishment upon you. He has given you the understanding of, of why you're going through this. But at the same time, God knows. Some things we learn in life, it takes us a while to come to the understanding of those things. We don't know it all, as they say, up front. But God knows. But at the same time, sometimes we have to seek God and ask God, why are you putting all of this upon me? Where did I go wrong? You know, because sometimes in life, saints, if we backtrack, and especially when we get God with wisdom to ask God for his wisdom, God can show us things. God can show us why we're tripping over this same threshold, or why we're tripping over this branch or whatever in life, you know. But Verse 4. Yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes were not waxed old upon you. And thy shoes did and thy shoes is not waxing old upon thy foot. In other words, God, God is God was a keeper. Not was, God is a keeper. God kept the children even when they were in the wilderness. You know, for 40 years, and you know, for 40 years, the, the, the saints of God was in the wilderness. You know, the Bible talks about their clothes didn't, you know, didn't get old upon them. Their shoes didn't, you know, wax old upon them. God is a keeper. Yeah. You don't talk about they had the best of this or the best of that. But the main thing was God was keeping them. God was, God, God had them, but he was keeping them. He kept them to the point to where none of their stuff got old or whatever. You know, it didn't, it didn't say, you know, it, it didn't say they had no Jordans or whatever these famous name brand, you know, clothing and so forth that people are wearing today. But God was able to keep them. You know, if your mind can more or less kind of go back to the point to where it's like when, when I look at in the wilderness, it's like, you know, to me it's like, you know, being way off in, in the country somewhere. There's no McDonald's, there's no Kentucky Fried Chicken, no Zaxby's, no malls, none of those kind of things. You were simply placed way out in the wilderness to where God was around you and God protected you and God didn't allow you to go no place else but the wilderness. He kept them there not for just four hours, mm -hmm. but for 40 years. Lord Jesus. That's a long time, saints. Amen. You know, that's a long time. But as the Bible said, one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Though it was a long time, God was yet keeping them. You know, the Bible said, we'll come past it with so great a cloud of witness. It said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily be set up. We have so many witnesses that have done things prior to us coming here to where we can look upon those things and gain strength, gain momentum. Gain to the point where we can trust in God just that much more. Because God did it back then, He can still yet do it today in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. In other words, they weren't around no kind of food or whatever. Not to the point to where they can bake bread or whatever and have any of this wine to the point to where I'm drunk or whatever. Not, I don't know, more or less say, I don't know who, who saved me or who's blessing me. In other words, God kept them away from all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, God was yet blessing them. Sometimes people can get drunk or whatever to the point to where they don't know how they got, wherever they got. But God kept them away from wine and stuff like that. God kept them away from bread to the point to where you can go out and you can buy bread or whatever. No, you're going to live off the land. I'm going to provide for you. In other words, God was there. See, a lot of times in life, we, we, we put our trust in our jobs and so forth, in our money, in our bank accounts or whatever. But we still say we have to look to God. God is the one that blesses us. You know, in other words, take away the money. Take away the job. And see if you still live. Amen. You will find out there that God is yet the one who blesses you. All these clothing and so forth that sometimes we have or whatever. Hey, we have them. I'm not saying don't have these things, but at the same time, don't put our trust in these things. Amen. We're not we're not about all of these clothes. We're not about all of these shoes and so forth. We're about serving God. Amen. Because the Bible says, naked you came, naked shall you return. Amen. In other words, we ain't bring nothing, we ain't taking nothing. Amen. Trust in God. Verse 7. And when you come into this place, Shiloh, the king of Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. And we took their land and gave it unto the inheritance of, Reubenite, of, of the Reubenites, and to the Gedites, and to the half tribe of Manasseh. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. In other words, God was blessing them. They came out and they went against these, these various lands and so forth, but God gave them victory over these things. God did. As they say, who did it? God did it. We didn't do it on our own. Verse 10. Ye stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the from the hill of the wood unto the drawer of the water. In other words, the great and the small. We all stand here before God. God is the one that's that's allowing us to be here. But it's God that's protecting us. Amen. That thou shouldest enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day. That he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, as he has as and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. One thing I noticed about God, though he said something before we got here, his word is still true. He promised, he promised to bless us, and he's yet blessing us, even though. We wasn't there in the natural form when he said, but he told him that he would bless his seed that would come after him. And that's us that continue to come in and continue to believe in him. God is yet blessing. In other words, God is true to his word. Amen. He yet keep his word. All we got to do as saints of God, humble ourselves, be obedient to the word, and we can be blessed of the, of the God. Verse 13 again. That he may establish thee today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he hath said unto thee, and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day, before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not there, that is not here, with us this day. And that, that's when we came along. We wasn't there. Amen. But the promise was yet to us, saints. Mm -hmm. Because God is faithful to his word. Yes. We, we, are, we are the descendants of Abraham. As long as we can believe in and trust in him, we are his descendants. So God will bless us because he had made promise to our forefathers. Amen. 
but with them that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with them that is not here with us this day. For you know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt. In other words, you can go back, you see how you live. In other words, they were looking back over their life. Sometimes you have to look back over your life and see how the Lord has blessed you. You know, I ain't the same way I used to be. God has blessed me. I don't even have the same mind that I used to have. I don't walk and talk like I used to talk. Amen. I don't live like I used to live. Thank you, Jesus. But in order, in order, in order to see those things, you have to look back on your life, saying, "Yeah, I ain't always been good, but God is blessing us." Yeah. And I thank God. Thank you, Jesus. But you know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which he which he passed by. And ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away, who heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Mm. Lest they should lest they lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall or wormwood. In other words, sometimes saints, we can see things in the light, but because we have the word of God planted in our heart, we know better. We know better to do this. We know better to do that. I'm flesh like they flesh. You know, I got eyes, I got hands, I got all my members in my body. I can do just what they do, but God has changed my mind. Yeah. And, and it's a blessing when God can have, have changed your mind and you can accept the change that's in your life. Because it can make you a better person. It will make you a better person. Mm -hmm. But the, the ultimate goal is to please God. Yes. In other words, let God make that transformation in your life. Don't just, you know, don't just, you know, God's working, but you're fighting against him. Because if you do, God can, you know, remove his hand. He can remove his power from you and let you just fall. But these people were able to go through God allowed them to come through certain lands and see a lot of a lot of the transactions of, of people and so forth. But at the same time, though they saw the transactions of other people, God was forewarning them. In other words, this is like this is like you know I tell them this it's something like we had a football game, but this is like a huddle. God is he's getting ready to tell you to play. The play is don't don't do what they do. Don't you see them doing that? Don't you do that? Yes. Because if you do that. Punishment is going to come to you. Verse 18 again. Lest there should be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away from turneth away this day from the Lord like the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of this, these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that bear gall or wormwood. In other words, like poison or whatever. Lord Jesus. You don't want. You don't want to. You don't want to have. It. In other words, if you have a mind to turn back on God, that's a mind of poison. Lord Jesus. You know, and you don't want that in your in your life. Amen. Amen. You you want to have you want to have a good heart, a good mind, the way you can serve God. Some things may seem hard, or whatever. But saying, let's just take courage and, and strive to do those things. In Amen. Other words, please God. Yes. And it should come to pass when he hear when he hears the words of. <clears throat> And it shall come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in, in the uh, though I walk in the imagination of my heart, and add drunkenness to thirst. In other words, the Bible says, There is a way right. which seemeth right unto Jesus. man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Sometimes we could be doing things that we could think that we are doing right. Saying we got to know that we are doing right. We got to know that we are walking in God's commandments. Because we're going to have to give account one day. We're going to have to stand before our Lord because he's going to judge us according to the work that we do in our natural body. You know, a lot of people, sometimes they don't care. But you may not care today, but when judgment comes, you're going to wish you had a care. You know I, I want to have a mind to where I want to care today. Amen. I don't want to wait to judgment to start caring. Mm -hmm. In other words, I want to think about the judgment today. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of times we don't put judgment always before. If I do this, what's going to happen? Right. You know, a lot of times, you know, there was time when, you know, we had a chance to go and, you know, witness to prisoners or whatever. You know, you'll be amazed at 
some good people that's in prison. Mm -hmm. But they made wrong choices. Mm -hmm. But because of the choices that they made, it, it, it took away them, it took away a lot of their freedom. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them got life. Yes. Because because of a simple choice that they chose, yes. they didn't they didn't take the judgment and sit before them, but they they overrode that judgment. I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you got self satisfaction, mm -hmm. but then you gotta pay for it later. Mm -hmm. Say we all gotta pay for what we do in our life. Amen. All of us, yes. from the greatest to the least. Amen. You know, remember how you talked about you know those that as, as far as the. Uh, them that make make things out of the wood, them that get down the water. In other words, the small and the great. We all got to do this thing. Verse 19 again. And it came to pass when he heareth the words of this curse, and he blessed himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in, my, in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to the thirst. You know, I was looking at this drunkenness of thirst. You know, you can have a person that's real thirsty. They can, they can be so thirsty, but then they'll go to drinking, you know, uh, alcohol or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when you drink alcohol and you're real thirsty, you're going to get messed up. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to you're gonna stumble in your natural ability to walk. You're going to stumble in your spiritual ability to walk. We don't want to drink, we don't want to drink um, wine for thirsty. When we get thirsty, let us drink water. Let us drink drink our water. Jesus said he would, he would be unto us as a well of water, spring up unto everlasting life. You know, not, not a wine, not a whiskey, but a water. Yes. Something that's going to keep us sober. Mm -hmm. The Lord would not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord, but then the anger of the Lord. And his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under the heaven. We all want our name to be written in the book. We all want our name to be written to the point that where we can go to heaven, not blot us out. Amen. But it's because of what we do, saints. You know, we don't want to entice, encourage no one to do wrong. We want to encourage one another in the way of righteousness. Amen. You know, regardless of who don't want it, sometimes we don't have to end it. But at the same time, you have to pray for them. But still encourage them in the way of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. Sometimes you wonder why people are not here today. And then you wonder that you start looking at them and then they start doing stuff. You know, number one, they, they left out from among us. Then they start doing things contrary. You know, we, that's why it's important to stay in the church. It's important to stay around the gospel. It's important to stay around the word of God to get encouragement. You know, the Bible even talks about to the point, you know, if you, you know, you, you, we are branches. We can do nothing without the Lord. Yeah. If we withdraw ourselves from the Lord, how can we live? Mm -hmm. None of us live without God. Yeah. Had never lived without God. When God first created us, we was living. He made us that day. But when we die, we, we don't have it. Mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not in us. He's not in us to the point to where, in other words, God said, I'm a, I'm a God of the living, not a God of the dead. Yeah. When you die, God has vacated you. Your body goes back to the dust. But your soul goes back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. So that, this gen so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they, sh when, when they see the plagues and that land and the sickness which the Lord had laid upon it. <clears throat> In other words, they're going to come and they're going to see something. You know? Have, haven't you seen houses or whatever? You said, man, what happened to that house? But somebody knew that house before you saw it. That house that you saw at, at a latter stage, that house was old and rotten and falling down. But somebody in their mind, they saw the house when it was new. They saw how people lived in that time. They saw what a wonderful time that they had in the house. Sometimes people can be like that about your life. Because your life has changed. It made a drastic change. You used to be up, but now you're down. What happened to Brother Rick? Well, he stopped coming to the, coming to the house of God. He stopped serving the Lord. Now he's out there with drug dealers and so forth. He's out there gang banging. You know, 
Look at him. He don't. He don't even look like. He look like he's about to die. Oh, How many times have we seen people that's like that? Amen. But they weren't always like that, saints. But when you withdraw yourself from God, these things can happen. That's why we have to have the fear of God in us. Walk upright. Don't let nobody pull you away from the house of God, away from God. Amen. Stay with God all your days. Verse 22 again. So that, the, so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a foreign land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land there is brimstone and salt and burnt, that it is not sown nor bare, nor any grass groweth thereon, therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zion, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Saying sometimes when God gives when when we again do things against God, when we don't please him, he can, he can just let us waste away. Mm -hmm. When it talks about the land and so forth, sometimes you look at the land, nothing grows in salt. When you see when you see grass where sometimes you have a yard full of grass, but then there's one spot that seems like grass won't grow. That's the way some people are like this. Because they because they have withdrawn themselves from God. They're not in, they're not, they're not pleasing God. So God just can wipe us, wipe us, wipe us away. Yeah. Even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great of, of this great aim? Then the men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers which he had made with them when he brought them forth out of that land of Egypt. Yes. In other words, because they didn't keep his commandments. Yes. They didn't walk in his statutes. They didn't keep his judgment. Do yes. you know, we have we have commandments to where that set before us that we got to walk according. Some of them we might not even know all about, but the ones that we do know, we still have to walk according. Because if we don't, God can just wipe us out. People can come and look at us and they'll say, hey, what happened to them? Man, God really took care of them, man. You know, they, they did this, they did that. In other words, they did against the will of God. Mm -hmm. And God wiped them out. Mm -hmm. But sometimes before he wiped them out, he'll let us suffer. He'll let somebody else see. In other words, haven't we seen sometimes how people have moved themselves or withdrawn themselves from God and, and God has, you know, punished them to the point to where they're not here anymore? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Which they can yet be yet amongst us, you know, living and praising God, but because they chose, they they deviated from the word of God, yeah. mm -hmm. and God took them out of here. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a pleasing sight, saint. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, we want to live so we can live with God eternally. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to die in the Lord. Yes. You know, we're gonna die, but we want to die in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord, of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. And they went and served other gods and worshipped them. God and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and whom he had not given unto them. It's a, it's a terrible thing to go out and worship another god when you have the true and living God before us. Yeah. We are the we are the saints of the most high God. Yeah. There is no God that's higher than God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Again, there is no God that's higher than God Almighty. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we did if, if we do things to displease Him, God Almighty can wipe us off the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And it won't be the first time. For well, they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and whom he had not given unto them. And, his, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land, to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of, the, out of their land in anger, and his wrath, and in great indignation, and cast them, cast them into other land, another land, 
as it is this day. Sometimes, you know, you say, you wonder why God, instead of God casting us out to the point to where he killed us, because all the time God don't kill the, kill the people of God, even though they have gone to church. Mm -hmm. But he moved them to another land. In other words, they still live. That's mercy. Yes. God is full of mercy, saints. Yeah. Has always been. He, he, he don't want to kill us. He wants us to live. Amen. He wants us to live and be able to live throughout eternally with him. But we have things the way we have to do. We have to please him. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in, in anger and in wrath and in great indignation, and cast them into another land, as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. In other words, we can't figure it out. Amen. It's not for us to know. Again, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Amen. In other words, what God wants us to know, we'll know it. Amen. If you want to know why such and such is not here, God can reveal it. Because they disobeyed him. That's why they're not here. Why we sit here? Because we're pleasing God. We're striving to please God. And as long as we strive to please God, God can yet keep us until it's time to leave this land. Chapter 30. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt, thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, by thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. See, if we can love the Lord thy God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, we don't got time for nothing else. Amen. I say with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. There's Amen. nothing can get in my mind if it's filled with God. Amen. There's nothing can get in my heart if it's filled with God. But since we have to be filled with God. You know, pray for one another. Pray that God will fill us with his wisdom. Fill us with his knowledge. Fill us with his praise. Fill us with his joy. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, yes. fill us completely. That's right. Yes. You know, no, no, no space for nothing. Yes. That then the Lord thy God would turn thy captivity and, and, and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. In other words, that, that's benefits. Mm -hmm. that, that's God's, that's God, God's mercy. Mm -hmm. He can scatter us and he can gather us back together again. Mm -hmm. He can do away with us and he can pull us all back together again. Mm -hmm. if, any, if, any, if any of thine be driven out, out unto the ut outmost parts of heaven, from thence will, will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. You know, I used to tell somebody, tell, tell somebody, fetch that, fetch that. The Lord can fetch us right back. Yeah. He, he, he allowed us to go out there. He made us go out there, but he fetched us right back. I think it was Nebuchadnezzar when he was sitting down and he was saying, you know, look at this great Babylon that I have built. But God cast him out there. Yeah. Here is this great king. But now, this great king, because he wouldn't humble himself down to the, 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 the true and living God, but he made himself as though he was God. All this stuff that I have built. You know, in other words, when you start pumping yourself up, God got a way of deflating you. Yes, he does. He allowed Nebuchadnezzar to go out, go out, go out in the field and, and eat grass. Yes. A lot of his things and so forth to grow like eagles claw. But God still had mercy upon him. He did that for seven years. Mm -hmm. And then he allowed him to come back. Yes, he did. But when he came back, his talk was totally different. Yes. Sometimes saints, God will allow us to go through things. Yes. But at the same time, just humble ourselves. That's why he said, if my people, which are called by my name, mm -hmm. will humble themselves mm -hmm. and pray. Sometimes we can get out of line. Mm -hmm. 
We're, we're not so, 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 so high to where we can't get out of line. But if we ever get out of line, always humble ourselves to get back in line. God, God is waiting for us. Amen. God, God don't want to destroy us. He has no pleasure in destroying his people. Yeah. He wants us to live. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. See, all you have to do is change our heart. Amen. You know, I was, I was talking to somebody the other day, and it was more or less, it's kind of like, you know, men talk, and they say, you know, if I can, if I can, if I can, you know, and y'all ladies, y'all, y'all take heed of this too. Say, if I can get a conversation with her, you know, in other words, that, that's all that needs is a conversation. In other words, I'm trying to draw her heart. If you allow your heart to be taken by a man or a woman, a lot of times they'll do a lot of things against you. I uh, say to you, they can have, they can more or less have you as a slave, so to speak. But what you have to do as a female, don't allow every man to get your heart to capture your heart. Not, and, I, and I use that word every man because there's going to be sometime in your life there's going to be one man that can capture your heart and there's nothing wrong with that you know and you can capture his heart but with the heart when you once you've got a personal heart they'll do it they'll do some anything for you Amen. they'll go out they'll work for you they'll they'll you know the wise you know they'll cook for you they'll clean they'll bear children for you because you have their heart but on the flip side of things, don't allow your heart to be taken by Satan. Don't let Satan have his way with your heart. Give your heart, give all of your heart to God. Verse 6 again. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Amen. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine end, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. In other words, all God wants the people to do is obey him. Amen. Though you went contrary, though you've done this, you know, even the Bible says in the New Testament, we all have sinned. None of, none of us have no business to look at no one to the point and say, well, you did this, you did that. You know, look at yourself. What did you do? And if you say that you didn't do nothing, you know what? It would be no business in Christ dying for you if you, if you didn't have no sin about yourself. Christ, Christ took upon himself. Christ didn't have no sin. No. But he took upon himself the sins of the world. In other words, death came, by, death came because of sin. If Christ didn't have no, no, no sin, he had no reason to die. Amen. But death, he took upon himself the sins of the world. And he died for the world. That's why we, we don't have no, no, no chance or no ability to look at nobody to the point to where, you know, you, you're bad and I'm good. Amen. I didn't do as much as you. Just say, I was wrong, just like you was wrong. Amen. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the, fruit of the, in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy father. In other words, if you return to the Lord and start doing those, his, his doing his work, his commandment, and he will bless you. He said, in other words, and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, 
and the fruit of thy body. He said, what fruit do I have in my body? You know, even the New Testament talks about, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, kindness, gentleness, all these kind of fruits and so forth. Those fruits can reside in your body. You can have, you can have love for one another, mm -hmm. but God has to change your heart. God has to change your mind. He has to do the operation of your heart. In other words, you can't do this on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, many times, you know, things have come up upon us and we say, well, you know, I, I get them. Yeah. But because God has changed our heart, say, I, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. enemy will bring all kinds of things to us. Yeah. But we have to reject that. Why? Because we are servants of the Most High God. Yes. And being servants of the Most High God, we have to serve Him. Obey him. The Bible says, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servant, you are to whom you obey. In other words, if you obey Satan, you're his servant. Yeah. If you obey God, you're his servant. Yeah. That's not hard. Just make sure you're doing God's service. Yeah. And the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy father. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, for this, for this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it for all. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up, go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? In other words, it's not far from us. Mm -hmm. Who going who to send to go up to heaven? Why, why send somebody to go up to heaven? He's already told us down here in this earth what to do. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea, or to who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? In other words, it's already written. We have it right here in the, in, in the scripture. Nobody got to go so far to bring it to us. In other words, it's right here. Mm -hmm. But the word is very, very nigh unto thee in thy mouth. And in thine heart, that thou mayest do it. Amen. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. All through life, saying, no matter what avenue we turn, there is either life or death. You know, there's either blessings or curses. Yeah. You know, we have choice in this life. Sometimes we choose and then we pay for it later. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we choose and we pay for it later, but we reap good benefits. So we have choices. But but it's set before. God allows us to do evil when we want to do evil. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't advise that. Mm -hmm. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. If we can keep God's commandments and obey God, we can go anywhere throughout this entire world. God will still yet bless us. Yeah. Simply because we are keeping his, his word, yes. keeping his command, mm -hmm. doing his judgment. Anywhere throughout this entire world, no matter how bad it may seem, you know, no matter how good it may seem, go and keep his commandments, saints. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about life. Mm -hmm. Choose ye this day. Mm -hmm. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day 
that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land of whether thou possess, when thou pass over Jordan to go to possess it. In other words, don't turn against God. He's already, he's already letting us know, Sam. If we do what he say, he'll bless us. If we keep his commandments, he's going to bless us. But if we start turning and serving other gods, you know, he denounces this day. You're going to be cursed. You're going to pay for it. You know, hell is our portion. We're trying to escape hell. Yes. Right? Hell is a place to where no one Hallelujah. wants to go by choice. Yes. But it's a place to where God is going to cast us if we disobey him and stop, you know, start serving other gods. Verse 19, listen at this. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Amen. Mm -hmm. But remember, he said, heaven and earth. In other words, they hear him. They, they're going to be against it. They're going to, in other words, they're going to record this stuff. And when heaven and earth record it, what else can we do? It's written. Amen. God said, he told us to do what he said. It's up to us. The choice is ours. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, Amen. that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is life. Yes. And the length of days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. To give them. God have kept his God have kept his end of the bargain. Mm -hmm. He said what he would do and he has done it. Amen. We are blessed, saints. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes we're blessed and don't know why we're blessed. Amen. We're blessed because God promised our forefathers years ago, mm -hmm. before we even came on the scene. Yes. But it was a promise that was made even for us that would come out. In other words, we wasn't there when he made that promise. But he knew that we were going to fall off. Mm -hmm. So he yet blesses us, saints. Mm -hmm. So again, choose life. Mm -hmm. Choose life that we all can live. Mm -hmm. New Testament scripture. Just a few verses. St. John 3 and starting at verse 14. When you choose life. St. John 3 and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, mm -hmm. even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Yes. That's why, as they say, we lift up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the one that gives us life, life in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. God gave us life, but Jesus is the life eternal. Because we have to believe him. We have to believe that God sent his only begotten son into the world yes. to save us. Amen. He, not only did he come, but he shed blood for us. Yes. To wash away our sin. Mm -hmm. to, to allow us to be introduced back to God. Because yes. God had cast us away because of our sin. Our sin put us put space in between God and ourselves. Yes. But Jesus came to get in between that space to draw us back to God. Yes. But because Jesus. of his blood, because of his righteousness, because of his love for us, mm -hmm. God's love towards us. Yes. So we have to we have to give God thanks. Yes. St. John again. The fifth chapter. Start at verse 23. I start at verse 22. 
For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Choose ye this day. Amen. We want life, Lord. Amen. In order to have life, we must choose our Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. We must. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, and hath given the given and hath so hath he given to the son to have life in himself. So say it's about life. Again, we want to live. In order for us to live, we must accept the will of God, accept his son. Yes. One scripture says, You believe in God? Believe, believe also in me. Yes. Believe in him. Yes. Let us trust in him. Because he was sent by God. And he is. Amen. And we thank God to take for him sending his son in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 